Uh, my name is Eric Stoyer. I'm the creative director of Creative Commons. And Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that works to make it easier to share. So when you create something, by default, it's under standard copyright, which is all rights reserved. So when you see someone who has expressed their copyright by saying all rights reserved, that means that the, the copyright rights you're granted when you create something, they're reserving all of them. They're holding on to all of them. Uh, Creative Commons is more of a some rights reserved approach to copyright, saying that um, I've created this thing and I'd like to um, retain copyright to it. I want to be credited and known as the creator of it. I'm not relinquishing that right. But there are certain uh, of my copyright rights that I'm happy to give the public because I think that the public will be able to uh, use this work in interesting ways or maybe they'll make something better than I did out of it or they'll just um, make something completely new out of it or use it in some way that I hadn't even intended and it'll be interesting to see what will happen. Um, so people will, um, there are six Creative Commons licenses in all and people will um, decide which one they want to use based on the rights they want to give to the public. So they may decide that I'd like people to be able to use this work but only for non-commercial purposes. I'm reserving the right to make commercial use out of it. Or they may say I'd like people to be able to make derivative works and remixes out of it or use it in a collage or in a, in a, in a documentary. Um, or they may say that I want people to be able to use this, but they can only share it verbatim. They can't re-edit it or make any derivative works out of it. So there's a number of questions you basically have to think about when you're, um, when you're considering a Creative Commons license. And based on your answers to those questions, you decide which of the licenses you want to apply to the work. And you put it out there. And um, it's, a, it's a, a legal way to offer certain rights to the public while you still can reserve the rest of them. I, I think that, um, that sharing and the way that it's uh, kind of exploded on the internet has a lot to do with people's um, interest in having their voices heard and also for getting credit for the things that they've made. And I think that sharing also you know, opens up um, economic opportunities for creators that, that, um, that weren't there previously. Uh, giving things away for free but uh, re holding on to other rights, like commercial rights, enables you to say, uh, put songs out there and have lots more people hear them. Um, you can't, you're not giving them the right to sell them, but you're allowing them to share them and post them and, and remix them. And through that, many more people hear them and they might come see you play, or they might come buy some of your merch, or they might buy your album, or they might license your, film, uh, your, uh, your song commercially for their film. Um, they just wouldn't have heard it otherwise. I think sometimes about this uh, anecdote I was sharing with a friend the other day, and I used to work in college radio. And uh, I remember before I got to college, I used to read the college music charts because they were always filled with all these bands that I'd never heard of. And I was like, okay, I'm looking to that to see what these people are listening to. And I'm going to go look at that and find, um, find that music and, and track it down for myself. And the reason that those people all heard that music is because it was being given to them by record labels. They wanted um, those, that particular set of people who were tastemakers to have access to the music, to play it on the radio, to share it with friends, and also to report about it in these charts that would go to the magazines. And that was the only way I even heard about any of these bands. They weren't on MTV. They were definitely not on the radio. They may have been on a college radio station that I didn't have access to. Um, but I would look to those charts and say, okay, this is interesting music. I want to go search it down and find it. Uh, when I got to college radio, I was there for a few years. I was a music director at a radio station in Santa Barbara. And um, you know, the amount of music that I found out about there was just astounding. And my, and my, um, my interest in music exploded. And, 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 the, the, the breadth of music I became interested in grew enormously because I had access, free access to so much of it and because labels were giving us music to check out and share with people. And um, it didn't mean that they were giving it to us to then resell to other people. It meant that we could use it non-commercially. We could use it under the terms of the agreement that we had with them, which was to listen to it and play it on the radio and talk about it, make, uh, Make it, make it big so that they could um, then sell copies of it. They, they weren't going to be able to push that stuff through MTV or, or uh, traditional radio. So they were relying on, a, on, a, on an audience and a channel that would share that music with other people and be excited about it and through that enthusiasm create an audience around it. We're starting to see things in the last year or two especially that we just probably wouldn't have imagined 10 years ago happening. People are putting you know, major albums out under Creative Commons license and asking people to share it with friends and their uh, film studios that are putting uh, B-roll or soundtracks and pieces of their films out there under Creative Commons licenses and actually, actually asking people to reuse it and, and make new things out of it. And, um, I don't know that that means that um, anytime soon a major studio is going to release a $100 million film under a Creative Commons license. That may happen eventually if uh, the model changes in a way that 
um, that, that that makes sense for them to do that. But in the meantime, we're starting to see them experimenting with this approach in uh, really exciting ways. And um, you know, in addition, we're seeing just millions of, of sort of everyday creators, people who are not working within any sort of established system but make things, uh, become familiar with this approach of doing things and they're putting their work out there under Creative Commons license. So the, the, the commons, the, the collection of stuff that's available for the entire world to use grows every day, literally, as a result.